It was the 1980s and Coca-Cola was coming out of its toughest decade yet. So a group of top executives worked on a top secret project to save the brand. And the Holy Grail was invented. More than a drink, a patriotic symbol. Commercials invoking families coming together for the Christmas holidays. Or the crisp sound that represents the start of hot dogs on the family barbecue on 4th of July. Enjoyed by almond mums, truck drivers, frat boys shredding for the summer. I would drink regular Coke, but regular Coke is bad for you. This got veggies in it. And 18 year old Kelty's first time buying her own groceries when she moved out for college. Growing up in a house that didn't have pop growing up, purchasing Diet Coke started as this little novelty thrill when I first moved out. This little caffeine hit to get me through studying or right before basketball practice. And then mixing with vodka when I went out drinking. And then drinking hungover to get the taste of vodka out of my mouth. And then drinking when I was thirsty, when I was sad, when I needed to pick me up. When I was happy and needed to celebrate, became a point I was never not drinking Diet Coke. Diet Coke is a very polarizing topic on the internet. There's two sides. From the Lane Nortons of the world who say there has never been a study that 100% confirms it's detrimental to your health, to the Dave Asprey's of the world that consider it a real life emerald potion. Speaking of university at the time, I was studying sciences, so you bet your butt. I was that nerd that looked into studies if artificial sweeteners are good or bad for us. And let's just say it's divided. But I would drink, you know, a Diet Coke or two per day. Really bad ones. Personally, saw a study that pointed that it was directly gonna harm my health, so I just kept drinking. <sighs> that was until I had my own detrimental outcome. It was August 2022 and I decided to do a full blood panel, DEXA scan, and get my bone density tested. Not that there's anything wrong, it was just more, I, I wanted to have that baseline so in 10, 20 years I could look back at younger, healthier Kelty and be like, ooh, things are kinda same, I'm doing good. Things are really gonna help. Now I didn't expect perfect numbers. I have high stress. I travel a lot, but I am generally very healthy. And the one test that I knew I was just going to crush was my bone density. My mom has great bone density. I do weight bearing exercises. I eat my protein. I was so ready for this doctor to be like, damn girl, look at your bone density. I know. You girl, you are gonna be in the top one percentile. I take my test and the lovely lab tech starts to read off my numbers. Things are looking great. My ego is being inflated. Blood was looking good. We get to my bone density, she gets to my back and I'm ready prepping myself to hear that one percentile. And she showed me I was in the warning zone. There's the green, the yellow and the red. Now I wasn't in the red, but I was expecting to be the top of the green. I wasn't even in the green. Now I was just at the top of the yellow. But yes, that was an alarm at someone my age because it only goes downhill from here. And I'm already on the downhill spiral. It's like, I'm not that old. What could be causing this? Like, why is my bone density not good? I do resistance training. And without hesitation, she tells me, Well, it could be many things, but one is diet pop. Oh. And before she even could list other things, I was just like, So all those things about like the calcium leading to osteoporosis and all that. I was like, oh, so that's real? I thought that was like just the thing they scared us, that like weed was a gateway drug. And then she's like, oh, do you, do you drink some Diet Pop? I was like, oh, you know, occasionally, an hour, one four day. Yeah. I decided to give up Diet Pop for six months to see what would happen to me. I won't lie. I was pretty bummed about this, but then also got pretty excited because doing the math with inflation and the rising cost of food, giving up my two can a day average habit multiplied over six months would save me $1.8 million. So I'll be able to retire simply off this one change. Now there's many things that affect your bone density, but once again, as being a science nerd, I do know if you actually want to get results in a study, you can only change one variable at a time. Step one to break the habit, go cold turkey. How much Diet Coke was I drinking a day? Minimum one, minimum. And I say that because there was probably one day I just had one. That was not the average. And that leads me to the one time I was actually able to give up Diet Coke in my decade long addiction. I successfully gave up Diet Coke when I was 19 after looking up from my desk at 3 a.m. after a long study session to see eight empty cans on my desk. Which yes, I had all crushed in one study session that probably started around 1 a.m. In that moment, I was just like, like, oh yeah, this is bad, let's just give this up. Pretty good at the cold turkey. I'm just pretty, I can be black or white. It's like, we're cutting this out. And yeah, you just kind of have to go hard, but I'm pretty good at being like, we do this or we don't do this. It's been two and a half weeks since I've given up Diet Pops and something insane has happened and it could be not correlated. I'm breaking out. I just had a pimple here. Like Kelty, it's a break. I don't break out really. Like occasionally I'll get the odd pimple, but never white heads. And I'm naturally like uber, uber dry. Makes me wonder, did this have any effects on my hormones? 
all the caffeine, all the other things. What I lack at is the moderation. Just like having one a week. I don't do that. Because once you have one a week, what's the difference between one or two? And then it's three and then it's four and then it's one every hour. Day number one and obstacle number one. 5.30 p.m. grocery haul. After work, I weasel into some grocery stores downtown Vancouver because I don't have a car. So, you know, I can't do the big Costco haul. I gotta pretty much be at the grocery store every two days. And what's my one reward every time I hop into the grocery store? Grabbing Diet Coke. The little treat. I'm an adult now. I don't have my mom to say, good job, Kelty. How do you for doing your homework? No one tells me that about my taxes. There's no one waiting at home. It's just me. So what do I do? I get myself a Diet Coke because you deserve it. You deserve to have a little hit of dopamine after you did your taxes. And just that little crack of the can. So I settle for a kombucha, which honestly kind of slapped in the moment. I've never been so obsessed with the water in my life. Get this to Canada, I will do any brand deal. Flavor, the sparkling flavor. Jackie, Jackie, go drink some water. Day number three might have been the physically hardest. I had this bizarre craving around 2 p.m. I knew it was for a Diet Coke. That little, that taste, that fizz, and that little bit of caffeine. I knew I needed it and it would solve it. So yeah, I probably crushed four soda waters in that moment and it still didn't fit the bill. But it made me realize something. As this craving got me to the walk to the fridge for the fourth time, I realized what I was truly after. Cause think of a flat Diet Coke. Ugh. Ugh. No. I don't really love the taste and flavor of Diet Coke. It's... That sound, that first hit a bubble. Step two to break a bad habit, swap the habit. So then it became my mission to find the sparkling water. They would perfectly swap my Diet Coke craving. This is what I want. I've just been editing for hours. I'm just mentally exhausted. I just want a little more dopamine. I just want a little pick me up. In this very moment, it would cure this feeling temporarily, and then I will keep wanting more and more. And it's a vicious cycle. And down the road, I look at my bone density and I'm falling apart. And in 30 years, I'll look back and be like, why did I have a diet pop addiction? Oh. And the novelty of every time grocery store determined to find a new sparkling water starts to get that same dopamine hit that I normally get from finding my Diet Coke until I found the Holy Grail. Full transparency, I almost don't wanna tell you guys because if TikTok has told me anything, you, you just gotta gatekeep at this point in consumerism. But yeah, it's the Lemoncello LaCroix. Oh God, it is Italy summed up in a can, even though I'm pretty sure it's made in like Minnesota. I hate to admit this, sometimes I'll open like three of these in a day and only finish half of each. It's the first, the first hit is the best. Now I started to see the light outside of this Diet Coke cult I found myself in. You're probably thinking, Kelty, calling it a cult is a little extreme until you realize the amount of spiritual-like consumption I had to this beverage. Feeling a little slump midday, Diet Coke. Treat yourself after work, Diet Coke. Hungover, Diet Coke. Post-workout treat, Diet Coke. Craving novelty, Diet Coke. Going to the movies, Diet Coke. Airport, Diet Coke. Lunch, Diet Coke. Work, Diet Coke. Being awake, Diet Coke. Now yes, there's hundreds of other Diet Pops and Diet Coke. Keep bringing this goddamn devil's nectar in here. But, but we're gonna center this kinda around Diet Coke because Diet Coke has achieved a cult-like status. But the only way to achieve true cult status is to have Netflix do a documentary about you. So I decided to make this little documentary so our lovely Diet Coke finally got the cult-like status it deserves. It's been 60 days since I've had Diet Pop and the craving's kind of gone. Oh yeah, uh, fun fact, Diet Coke in Europe sucks, so I'm in Sweden right now. So when I say Diet Coke here, I mean Coke Zero here, but Coke Zero in North America sucks and Diet Coke is better. I just flew from Vancouver to Toronto. I feel like I've delayed 11 times, finally canceled, and I got to stay overnight in Toronto. It's been a long day and all I wanted, all I wanted is a Diet Coke. And it was just sitting there. It was sitting there in the fridge as I waited in this hotel after I've had a long, hard day. Obstacle number two, airport. That's just my little treat. It's my routine. Every time you go to the airport, you get through security. It sucks. You're stressed. Diet Coke. And this might be the hardest part about no Diet Coke. That's like my thing. When I'm on an airplane, and I get a free Diet Coke. Step three to break up this bag of habit. Bought a soda stream to save money. You said soda stream one time, it now collects dust in my pantry. I, I just want the 
I almost just screwed up. Saw this in the grocery store. Poppy, I know you have it in America. It's kind of like a prebiotic gut health drink that like tastes like pop. Anyways, this would be a great ad. We don't have it in Canada, so definitely not happening. But I saw this, I was like, it's the exact copycat. So then I just had a couple steps and I was like, wait, what am I avoiding in the diet pop? It's like the sweetener is erythriol, stevia, then it's like lemon, lime, Himalayan salt, garum gum, prebiotic, probiotic, and citric acid. Then I was like, ooh, that made me realize I had to figure out the exact ingredients in Diet Pop that lead to loss of bone density. Cause I'm like, this could have been a cheat. Hey, that's it. I figured it out, but either I was wrong one day or I found the best solution, except for my excessive LaCroix addiction I've developed. That's all this video has become. I now have a LaCroix addiction. I said, oh, it's not even fizzy. Ooh. I became very interested in artificial sweeteners because of the animal data, they may disrupt the gut microbiome. Now, is Diet Coke, artificial sweeteners, Diet Pop actually bad for you? Scientists like Lane Norton say this. We have to think about, again, the hierarchy of importance, right? And what are you replacing with? There is no situation where it is not a net positive to take somebody who drinks sugar-sweetened beverages and have them drink an artificially sweetened beverage. What that seems to suggest is there is a little bit of an appetite suppressant effect this gets a little bit more complicated because if these were people drinking sugar sweetened beverages, maybe they've already developed a sweet taste and trying to go to water is too much of a jump for them. This is a tool that may help some people. Is that obese person who lost 100 pounds by doing that? Do I really care about maybe a small alteration to their gut microbiome? No, because their gut microbiome is actually much more healthy now by them having lost all that excess adipose tissue. Let's take somebody like who's lean. Do I think that they are healthful? Probably not. Do I think they're unhealthy? I would say based on the current data, I don't think that they're unhealthy. Health gurus like Dave Asprey say this. That and sucralose are the two really bad ones and ACE-K is in the middle. So ACE-K causes benign uh, nodules to grow on your thyroid. That actually happened to me in the late 90s. Sucralose, turns out your gut bacteria shift dramatically from sucralose and most especially from uh, Nutrisweet or aspartame. When things in life like this are so polarizing, it really comes down to the consumer's own research and choice. Personally, I think there's two sides of the argument and you just have to pick what you feel more comfortable. There's a chance it's bad for you and lead to negative health outcomes. So just don't drink it, why risk it? Option two, it has such a small chance of having negative health outcomes, why not just enjoy it? Pick your poison until we have concrete facts whether it is good or bad for you. And the reality is, jury's still out. Also, I can pull on my whole journalist hat and also mention the fact that Coca-Cola has a lot of money and can definitely influence studies because they pay someone to look at certain things or not look at other things, influence what studies get released and what don't get published, hack the variables or sample size, where there's money. There's potential for hiding shit. Yeah, I'm treading waters here. I'm like, ooh, wait, let's, let's just go more of a deep dive. But like, I'm just a five foot seven girl in Northern Sweden right now. I, I don't think I can take on Coca-Cola. <laughs> Three months into this, I was getting a little frustrated. I was traveling, I couldn't have my Diet Coke. I was seeing no added health benefits. I was probably spending more money than I normally would. LaCroix is way more expensive than Diet Coke. And the soda stream is now collecting dust. Why am I even doing this? And that is when I had my three month breakthrough. I was out to dinner with my girlfriends. One of them orders a Diet Coke. And in that moment, I realized it didn't sound good. I thought about the taste of a Diet Coke. All I can remember is like a blood metallic tasting taste. Ugh. Why do I want that? Step number four to breaking a bad habit, making it unappealing. And this kind of did it for itself. There just got to be a point where drinking a Diet Coke just didn't sound appealing. So it's approaching six months of not having Diet Pop. And I won't lie, the craving is completely gone. The craving for carbonation is still definitely there. And I just drink a lot more LaCroix now. First month the hardest, second also there. And by third, things started to looking up. And the last three months have been really simple. The craving and habit loop is just not there anymore. Other things I've noticed, I used to have this nauseous feeling one to 6 p.m. every day. I might be bloated and that's gone. But at the same time, I made a lot of other health changes. I'm sleeping more, I'm drinking electrolytes, I've reduced my caffeine consumption. So was it that Diet Coke or was it a combo of all that? Either way, that one to 6 p.m i like nauseous bleh, feeling I would get, it's kind of gone. Also now, when I go to the grocery store and walk by that Diet Coke aisle, I no longer have that pull. It's really nice to just not have that mentally, but I've just always under this idea of like, I don't really like a lot of things having power over me that I have control over, like a Diet Coke. I used to be able to see it and there's no way I could say no, I had to have it. And kind of nice, I can like rationally think about it. I'm like, do you really want that? So it's been six months since I've given up Diet Pop. I'm gonna go get my bone density retested right now. 
there's a bunch of things you can do for bone density, whether we change your protein, lift more bone broth. I've purposely not done anything. The most consistent variable has been removing Diet Coke. Now I spend a little too much money on the Croy, but what's your favorite flavor? The lemon cello one. Six months later, I returned to the exact same place in Vancouver to get my bone density tested and see if giving Diet Coke out for six months actually did improve my bone density. And the results were confusing. Oddly enough, my hip bone density improved drastically. The girl was even like, what have you been doing? No diet pop. And she's like, oh, odd, because your back is about the same. I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> so no, it, it's hard to say. It's hard to say it's just been six months if it is improving or if the reality is that wasn't what was causing my bone density or maybe it's just like a little bit of everything because that's kind of fitness and health and wellness. It's like a overall picture of balance. So no, I didn't get the bone density outcome I wanted, but I won't lie, it has been so nice to get rid of this habit. Just not to have this control over me of this thing that doesn't really provide that much, that I'm constantly all day just on this crack, drink, crack, drink, crack, drink, and then like this need to have something that is really not beneficial and I'm just spending money on. But what does that mean moving forward? Picture this, it's 11 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm on the beach of Spain with my boyfriend. We pour out of the glass, literally where the name Bottle Shape Body came from and pour that over some ice. Oh, that's living. And I wanna live that life. So for the next six months, I'm gonna to try to attempt on the hardest part of this, balance, moderation. Can I just have a Diet Coke one, two, maybe three times a month? When I'm out with my girlfriends for brunch, when I'm a little hungover, when I've really, truly had a hard day, not being like, oh, good job, Kelty, you sent an email. I mean like, oh my God, tax season's done. Yes. Good job. But for now, let's try Diet Coke together for the first time in six months. Oh baby, let's mother up and do this. I don't even know what you taste like anymore. It's actually been over six months now. Okay, let's do this together. Is does it still taste good? First, my I have a completely neutral palate again. Or does it taste like chemicals? Or is it really just that good? It's okay, I'm a little underwhelmed. Let's get, we're in Europe, so it could just be a European thing. That was kind of trash. Oh, okay, there we go. Still, still my vote is Diet Coke. I'm a Diet Coke girly. Is that the millennial me show? Maybe, but like, in Europe? In Europe, I cheat. What's the, not in the same country, it doesn't count? As someone in a long distance relationship, I shouldn't make jokes like that. <laughs> and also I'll be retesting my bone density again in six months to see if still having very limited amount of diet pop in my life still continues to impact my bone density in a positive way. Let me know down in the comments any improvements, any of you have seen if you've given up something like Diet Coke. It's actually also just mentioned the best Diet Coke. Pepsi Max, Coke Zero, or Diet Coke? Please comment down below, because that is the debate of the century. I'm working on a big year-long challenge, and so if you're like, Kelty, that was just six months, I wanna know more. What happens when you try just moderation? Hit subscribe and you'll find out. So, cheers. Um, honestly, I really don't even have a desire to finish it. So it's also like 8 a.m. on a Tuesday. Have a great day, go pet a dog. Love you guys, bye.